Hello and welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. The entire Sahel region has lost an invaluable ally in the fight against Boko Haram insurgency and, of course, uh, extremism in the Sahel region of uh, Africa. The late president of Chad, Idris Deby, before, before his shocking death now, was known for his military prowess and the key roles he played in security strategy in the region. After three decades in office marked by insurgencies and intercommunal conflicts, the 68-year-old, who had just been re-elected for a sixth term, was killed in clashes with rebels belonging to a group called the Front for Change and Concord in Chad. Already concerns about political rivalry have started growing within Chad. First, over Derby's controversial six-year term, which the opposition had always considered unconstitutional, and second, the announcement of his son Muhammad as the new president of Chad. On the regional level, the death of Idris Deby leaves a huge vacuum, vacuum now in the military campaign against terrorism. And to avoid any unprecedented security challenge, the Nigerian government says it has beefed up security around its borders with uh, Chad, of course, and other neighboring countries. Take a listen now to Nigeria's Minister of Defense speak more on this. When we heard of this unfortunate uh, killing of the Chadian president, we know that problem is bound to be created amongst the neighboring countries. And Nigeria will be most hit by, by his absence. If there is no security in Chad, there will be a lot of problems. But thank God, we have a lot of military activities with the Chadian, Niger, Cameroon. We have all that uh, military concern. So, in the name of uh, multinational joint tax force, all these countries, including Chad, are contributing countries for the operation. What we hope is that very soon we will find a secure for the continuation of this team. The issue of weapons and armament, we are also afraid of that. Before Chad is the buffer, stopping most of this uh, infiltration of weapons and the rest of it, now there is this free for all, right from Libya down to Nigeria. It's very easy now because of the absence of the influence of Chad in that route. So we also have to take care of that and prepare our minds to it. Well, quite concerning there, I must say. So does Idris Deby's death put the Sahel region at further risk of destabilization, or how does the region overcome this difficult challenge and uncertainty without its strongman. Joining me now on the program to discuss this is, uh, well, I should call him a Sahel expert now, Dr. Kabir Adamu, who is a security risk management expert and uh, the chief executive officer of Beacon Consulting Limited, a security firm based in Abuja. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adamu, for joining us on the program. Let me start by asking you, how much will the region miss Idris Deby? Thank you, uh, Deji. So Idris Deby, um, late Field Marshal Idris Deby, was a stabilization fa uh, factor within the Sahel region. Um, he, his country was strategically placed in the middle of several conflict um, hotspots. Um, as far as Nigeria is concerned, let me start from home. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, as we know, is housing several um, terror uh, groups, in particular Lake Chad, um, the islands on Lake Chad is believed to harbor um, several of, of um, especially the Islamic State in West Africa province. Then you also have a wing of the Jamaat al ahli Sinna al Dawat wal Jihad. One of the wings that is headed by a certain Bakura is believed to have its operational base in the border area between Nigeria and Chad and in the border area between um, Chad and, and Niger. Now, um, if you go to the tri-border region, Burkina Faso, Mali, um, Libya, and, and Niger, now uh, that border too, unfortunately, has 
uh, it's been a hotspot for the movement of uh, several um, non-state actors, including terrorist groups, and the Chadian, um, you know, military's effort has been uh, well noted in terms of maintaining some form of stability within those countries and within that border area. Likewise, in the uh, Chadian Sudan uh, border, and then of course between Chad and Libya. So both at the multilateral and bilateral levels between him, Chad and the countries I've mentioned, um, the Idris Deby administration has played that uh, stabilization rule. Now, if you look at the East and Central Africa Economic Committee for which, um, which Chad belongs to, he, Idris Deby, in his 30-year rule, has also been uh, a strong element in the promotion of peace and stability, as well as the security uh, components of that um, of ECA. Now, he was instrumental in the creation of um, COPAS, which is the Council for Peace and Security that was formed, if I remember well, in 1998. And in the ongoing effort in Central African Republic, where uh, Chad has a component of certain troops. So all of these stabilization elements that uh, Idris Deby has played, now that he's not in the picture, and that his country is likely to face an internal strife, there is a lot of concern that uh, gaps will be created, because it's very likely that the junta that is ruling um, Chad at the moment will withdraw from some of these locations and pull its um, troops back in, in, into Chad in order to ward off the internal strife that um, it, it's facing. Now, if that happens, then gaps will definitely be created. And that is some of the concerns that um, analysts are currently hearing. So, so, so how so, so. important is it that his son has been appointed as uh, the interim president, obviously taking over for, from him? Uh, some people have said, look, that is important for, for stability. And we've seen France come out very strongly supporting him and supporting the transition process. So on, in the short term, I would say it's important um, in the sense that uh, we have seen what could easily have been uh, a very disruptive um, transition. Uh, he was, the leader was killed immediately after winning an election by a margin of about 75, 79%. And then just before he was sworn in, um, in fact, the day he was sworn in was the day he went to the battlefront. And so the swearing in never took place. So it could easily have turned into a, um, you know, a very rowdy and perhaps even a chaotic or even a conflict situation. But then somehow the military managed uh, the transition in a manner that, uh, as of now, has not created any major uh, consequence or repercussion. Uh, to the extent that even Western powers that we know are promoting democracy have tacitly uh, endorsed what all of us believe is a coup. So to that extent, and in the short term, I think it's a very good um, development. The transition has provided some element of stability. But then we need to look beyond that because we're analysts and we see a bit beyond what is in the obvious. Now, what, what was the reason for the rebellion, the rebels that killed um, uh, Field Marshal Idris Deby, what were they complaining about? They were complaining about the political space that has been shrunk, and they, according to them, they were allowed, disallowed to participate in the political process. And so, in th this particular rebel movement, the fact, which was formed mainly by military generals who were disgruntled and then moved out to Libya, where they entered into an agreement with um, General Ali Fakhar Haftar, and um, of course found safe haven in some parts of Libya from where they were launching attacks into Chad. Now that's on the one hand. On the other hand, um, democracy has become, uh, as, as it were, the, the accepted norm of government governance within Africa and the world as a whole. And what has happened effectively in Chad uh, with the coming of the military junta is the truncating of that democracy. So mm. we're likely to see a continuation of the rebellion, now not just by fact, by several other factions. Essentially, Ch Chad is a, a grouping of clans, ethnic and tribal clans. And we're likely to see a situation where, on the one hand, um, politicians, especially the opposition parties, would reject uh, at least a significant portion of them, and I think that has already happened, would reject this um, you know, truncation of, of the mm. democratic tradition. Then, on the other hand, we are likely to see these rebels who uh, perhaps 
uh, and this is, you know, uh, some form of conspiracy theory. Uh, there is a suggestion that they even have the support of some of the key Western um, countries, including France. So we're likely to see a continuation of that. And of course, with the growing opposition, uh, it, it, it appears that the next few months, beyond the immediate short term, is going to be a bit uh, chaotic and, um, uh, you know, for lack of a better word. Um, uh, uh, and, and let me quickly it, ask you this. Why do you think it's important that there is relative peace in, in Chad? Why, why is it important, for instance, for a country like Nigeria, countries like Cameroon, you know, countries like Niger as well, even though they have their own problems, why is it important that there's relative peace in chart for these countries? Thank you, um, AG. So uh, I'm going to approach uh, your, qu your questions from two points of view. Number one is from terrorism, uh, global terrorism. Now, it's generally agreed that uh, after uh, ISWAP and Al-Qaeda were dislodged in Syria and Iraq, that the new safe haven they found is the Sahel. And if we were agreed that... Um, Idris Deby, as the leader of Chad, has played a stabilization rule that has reduced the influence of these terrorist groups from expanding their foothold within the Sahel, um, then that is the number one concern, that with the exit of Idris Deby and perhaps a bit of uncertainty whether his son, who, let's remember, is a greenhorn in politics, yes, he may be, uh, have a military career, but then this is the, his first foray into politics. And I've already mentioned that there, there are some ethnic and tribal cleavages within um, Chad. And so there is a lot of uncertainty on whether he will be able to balance the politics in Chad in the manner that his, his father did. did. And so if that happens, then there is a lot of concern that gaps will be created. And these gaps would result in two things. Firstly, Chad um, would be in, you know, involved in some form of civil uh, strife, maybe even a war. And then on the other hand, Chad's ability to protect its border as well as maintain stability in the several um, conflict hotspots that I've mentioned earlier on would reduce. And so that means these um, terrorist groups would now be able to expand their operations. And if that happens, then governments like Burkina Faso, like Niger, and to an extent Nigeria, would be affected. First, with, let's remember that the objectives of these terrorist groups is to collapse uh, those governments and then establish their own authority in form of some government uh, you know, controls and protocols. And so if that happens, then we're likely to see several governments in the Sahel collapsing. And unfortunately, and this is a huge possibility, being replaced by either these groups or uh, persons or individuals or groups that have sentiments or support for these terror groups. How, how also important is that? you know, in terms of guaranteeing uh, security now in, in Chad. How important is it that uh, that country also hosts the headquarters of uh, Operation Bakan of France and uh, the, the multinational joint tax force? Now, a lot of people have um, placed that on the diplomatic prowess of late uh, Idris Deby. Uh, some have explained that his diplomatic prowess his uh, recognition as someone of uh, trust, especially by the Western world and by countries like Nigeria, uh, led to the establishment of the headquarters of, as an example, the Multinational Joint Tax Force in, in Chad, uh, in Ninjamina specifically. Others have also pointed to France's decision to locate the headquarters of Operation Barking in Chad as an example of that diplomatic prowess and uh, the uh, confidence um, rule that uh, has been reposed on late Idris Deby. Now with his exit, there are lots of concerns that all of this may change. And so that, I think, is perhaps the consequence of his exit. Uh, will world leaders continue to, uh, you know, confer that type of confidence on a government, a, a junta that is clearly not, not democratic? What consequence will that have on other rebel groups uh, and as well as other non-state actors within the sub-region. Uh, we've we are generally agreed that the, the era of coup d'etat uh, across the continent is gone. Now, with this uh, tacit acceptance of a coup d'etat in Chad, what impact would it have on... Maybe yeah. this was just a necessary coup. 
if you like, <laughs> if there's um, anything like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and it, it is this double standard that is making um, advocates of democracy and civil rights activists to question, unfortunately, the role of certain Western countries in, in Africa. And and I think especially when we are told that... Uh, the, the, the head of parliament who should have taken over uh, refused to do so and said he was not going to do so, you know, so. Um, we don't know what type of pressure. <laughs> really. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kabir Adam, for coming on the program. Let's just hope there's peace in chat because it's, it's very, very critical that uh, there's peace in that country, just as uh, the Nigerian defense minister actually highlighted not having peace in that country would, would really affect uh, Nigeria. And, uh, and you don't want Nigeria to blow up in crisis so, in, so in, in, in Africa. They, Nigeria can do more than hope. I'm very happy that the defense minister mentioned, you know, mm. the deployment of troops to the sure. border. But we can do more than that. We can engage with, the, with ECHA. We can engage with AU to promote engage, um, some form of diplomatic engagement between um, the stakeholders. In this instance, if we allow... The Libya, of course, Libya has been at the center of all of this, and mm. discussions are not being held, unfortunately. So we need to see the role that General. Yeah, and, and that's true. That's that's true. So so that's like bring them to the negotiation table, the rebels, the the man from exactly. Libya, and uh, the, the transition government, right? And, and and fact too, and more importantly, mm. there are countries that we know um, supported General Hali, Halifa for the purposes of this discussion. I'm I, not going to mention. I, I, but but ironically, Fran <laughs> Everybody knows France actually supports uh, Halifa Hatta anyway, and, and here you have France supporting um, the transitional council in, in, in Chad. Um, well, I'm not going to lend here to the conspiracy <laughs> theory, but there are several conspiracy theories uh, out there. How could the fact rebels have moved 200 kilometers close to Njemina mm -hmm. when France had surveillance cap capabilities it, it had? Yeah. And then from the analysis of the gunshot, gunshot um, wound, wound on mm. General Debbie, it, it was very obvious that he was shot at close range. range. Uh, so could it have been by people that were within his close protection ring and, and all that? So there are several conspiracy theories out mm. there, but I think uh, the absolute issue that has come out for especially African countries is that in international politics, there are no permanent interests. And I think that is what Nigeria should um, recognize and go ahead and you know, uh, encourage this diplomatic engagement that I, I spoke about before, uh, for lack of a better language, um, the shit hit the fan. You're quite right. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you, MDG. All right, we'll take Stay a break and we'll be right back. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, but truth is universal. How in practical terms? Can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it. Use it to take action. DG360, dissecting the issues.